Episode five, the Holt Naylor Show is about to begin. Got some exciting news in this episode. Also, on the other side of this break, ECU GOAT, Shane Carden. Hope you enjoy the show, but if not, as always. That's too damn bad! Holt Naylor turns, and Holt will take off and run himself. He's at the 40-yard line. Holt Naylor's to the 30. Look at him go! 20, 10, 5, touchdown Pirates! There's local politics, bud. It's showtime! Episode 5, The Holt Naylor Show. And on the other line, we got Shane Carden, one of the best quarterbacks to ever play here. Shane, can you hear us? I got you guys. Finally made it on. Dude, sorry it took a while. We had some uh, technical difficulties. All good. Um, I kind of wanted to start off with your high school recruitment and then just kind of go from there to where you are now. You know, you were kind of under recruited, um, you know, but you rough and Lincoln, you were one of the first quarterbacks that they got to bring in to run the air raid. What was your recruitment like? What was it getting recruited by rough like and Lincoln? Uh, you know, Lincoln was young at the time. What was that like? Yeah, recruiting was uh, it was pretty frustrating. I think when I where I was in high school, I mean, I just felt like I was kind of always the next guy on the list, and that's kind of what my high school coach had told me. Kind of looking back at everything. Um, you know, from his stories now, but yeah, I just, I was, I was committed to Stephen F. Austin in Nacogdoches, Texas. I went on a uh, recruiting visit there with um, another quarterback who was just leaving Texas Tech because there's new coaches there named uh, Garrett Riley. And uh, <laughs> funny enough, he was transferred from Texas Tech. He knew, or Lincoln knew the OC there, Shannon Dawson. And uh, I think they had a conversation and Shannon told him that he had this uh, guy from Houston who was getting um, and then funny enough, I was working out at the time in Houston with BJ Simmons, uh, who had been a big guy at tech, broke a bunch of records and, um, they kind of had a connection with Lincoln and, uh, sure enough, like two weeks before signing day, I got a call from Ruff and Lincoln and they're kind of talking to me. And, um, you know, I was like, I had another offer from last minute from central Michigan and. You know, I was looking at Michigan. I was looking at North Carolina. I kind of figured, you know, I got a chance to go on one visit. I figured North Carolina would be warmer. I like the great offense. And uh, I flew into Greenville, man. It was totally iced over. All this, all, <laughs> everything was down. It was just like this campus closure because it was so cold. Um, Ruff actually wasn't there. He was out recruiting, getting all the guys that to save that class. And I uh, just spent time with Lincoln. And we talked for a while. And, and his goal, like, from the start was, hey, we're running 100 plays. I thought that was great, and um, yeah, I just kind of built it from there, and, and things worked out, you know, the way they kind of did, and uh, just was able to build that relationship with uh, Ruff and Link. And I remember getting back from my um, my official visit, and like back then, you know, I, man, I don't even know if, like how I commit or whatever it is. Like, so I had this like twenty four seven. Um, sports guy called me and he said, you recruit, did you commit to ECU? I said, yeah, I told Lincoln I was going there. He said, well, did you officially commit? I said, I, I told him, yes. I'm coming. <laughs> so you better call him and say, you're <laughs> okay. okay. So I call him up, I call Ruff. Ruff calls me. He's like, all right, man, well, I'm your new dad. Um, <laughs> you got your dad in Houston, you your dad in Carolina. And then you guys talked to him last, uh, last week, which was a great interview, man. This is a much easier first question you gave me than you gave him. So I appreciate <laughs> For that. For sure. Um, yeah, man, that's just what it was. And, uh, you know, I when I first on the a recruiting visit, you know, before Ruff and them had already got there, it was I heard from other players that it was this family mentality at ECU. And, and then when you have Ruff saying, hey, I'm your new, your new North Carolina dad, you're like, okay, I'm, I'm feeling that. And, uh, yeah, just two great guys. Lincoln being very young definitely pushed me and, and our relationship, uh, especially in the beginning, went through a lot. And he pushed me, and there was times where – you know, I, I, you know, as you're a young guy getting pushed by a coach who's making his way, you know, there wasn't, there were some disagreements that I saw that I thought should go a different way, but he definitely got the best out of me. And um, we definitely have a great relationship today. Um, but for Ruff, I mean, it was from, from day one, from two years on scout team, that first year, Ruff would come find me and just see how I'm doing. And um, he was always a guy, if, if you, if you did the right things and, and you were on time and, you know, you worked your tail off. He didn't care if you were walking. He didn't care if you were a starter, man. He, he'd reach out. He'd always make sure you were doing good. Um, definitely very appreciative of those two. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I mean, you literally just explained rough. And for the people that watched the show last week, I mean, that's that's rough for you. I got recruited by him for a year. 
A lot of people know that, obviously, but you got a chance for, to play for him. What was something, um, I guess, a story about him that not many people would know during your time there? Uh, just a core memory of him and y'all's time at ECU. Yeah, um, I'd say the biggest thing was, like, he shared a lot. Like, he'll share a lot in interviews, but, like, he even has more to give out when you're in that, when you're in that, like, locker room with him. And you got to see a piece of it getting recruited from him. And, you know, you got to share some really cool yep. stories last week. And that was cool because, right, you got to go through that whole process, like your freshman year getting recruited from him. Where, man, I met him on a phone call and then I saw him for the first <laughs> time. Um, but, man, like he, but the other side of it, too, was like he'd ask a lot, right? So I remember coming off my sophomore year, true sophomore year, you know, we didn't make a bowl game. And, you know, Ruff had just gotten a surgery and we're doing the winter workouts. And everyone's like, man, Ruff's back out here. We're all pumped. And he just comes out there fired up, dropping F bombs. You think this is like <laughs> grass on the line? Let's go. And everyone's like, oh shit. And uh, man, I keep, but he'd get that. And like, you'd want to do that for him, right? You'd be, be five a.m., you know how it goes, those morning workouts yep. in the winter. It's just like a miserable time, but like rough, you know, fired up, ready to like fight somebody. And uh, so we go off, you know, we're kind of up and down that year. I don't start the first game, I get in. And uh, we're going in to play Houston, right? And they're all from Texas, and they have the, the connections with Holderson and all those guys. Yep. And, you know, and they're asking Ruff and me, like, you know, what's it mean to Houston? Who, you know, I just want to play them. And I was like, and deep down, you know how it is. I'm like, heck, yeah, I want to beat Houston, man. They didn't give me an offer. <laughs> oh, like, yeah. That's pretty high school, like 20 minutes from there. So I was fired up. I really wanted to beat them. It would make us bull eligible going into a bye week. I mean, it was huge. And so me and Ruff were asked that the whole week. And, you know, we meet in the office and just be like, hey, man, just keep saying what you're saying. Just kind of shrug, shrug it off. They come to Dowdy and we, you know, beat the brakes off them. We have a Heck big yeah. day. And uh, I remember Ruff grabs me right after the game. He's just like, hey, that was sweet, huh? I was like, hey, <laughs> sweet. Um, so, you know, I just like, he'd ask everything, man. He was, he was definitely a lot harder than I think people maybe thought. Um, but he definitely gave more than I think people thought. Like, it was always, always about us and, and whatever – we needed something, like I said earlier, whether you were walk-on or you were starting quarterback, man. If you gave it to the program, he gave it to you. Yeah, that's awesome. I think that's one of the most important things as a head coach, and especially to have a successful program, which y'all did, obviously, is the quarterback-head coach relationship because you, you two are the face of it. When you lose, you're the reason why. When you win, you're the reason why. So um, obviously a reason y'all were successful is because y'all had a great relationship. You talked about Lincoln a little bit. I kind of wanted to, to touch on that a little bit more. I mean – People look at him now and all the accolades, the Heisman winners, the first round picks. Um, but you had him at 26 years old. What did you see in him? Did you know at that age, like this guy's going to be a stud in five years? Or, you know, what are some stories there? Or, you know, what was that relationship like? You kind of already hit on. I just want to kind of touch that a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, I, you could see like looking back and looking back almost like seeing old Leach videos, you kind of saw that like where he pulled some of his – comments or kind of how he, he kind of held himself definitely obviously two different people um but the first thing i noticed i mean ruff would be in like an everyday just team meeting and lincoln's in the front in a chair with a notebook taking notes and like oh, yeah. i never saw another coach do that at any point in my journey of yeah i've never seen that yeah he's up there taking notes like into it watching you know and he'd always sit in our room and be like hey don't 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 be like, don't be studying. Don't be like a content, like be training for where you want to be. He's like, I'm an OC. I'm trained to be a head coach. You're a scout team guy. You should be trained to be a starter. Like that kind of mentality. And Lincoln's definitely someone who he, if he's, if he's preaching, he's doing it, you know, yep. and when he's sitting there in front of us staring at rough, taking notes, you're like, okay, that's your guy. I better have my stuff. Right. Um, but he was also really good. Like, you know, the long camp meetings where it's like, seven at night and you're watching the practice film and it's just ongoing and he'd stop and be like, all right, someone's got to get a joke or something. Man. Like he, <laughs> he had a very human part of it that we were all like burning. And uh, so he, he'd ask a lot, but he, he understood like he had this good component of, you know, understanding the player and, and giving us a chance to just unwind and connect with him as a person rather than just a coach player. Yeah, dude, them, uh, them camp meetings are tough. 
<laughs> I remember <laughs> then late night was my freshman year. I remember like looking cross eyed at thing. I'm like, dude, I don't even know what we're installing right now. I better study when I wake up in the morning. Uh, Caden's got a question for you, and then we'll kind of go from there. Yeah, Chase and Caden here. Really glad to have you on. Uh, I was looking at just doing some prep before the show today, and I saw a couple parallels with our story. Um, obviously, you did, uh, your story went way better than mine, and obviously, everyone know you're a legend here. But I saw that you know you started your first two years on the scout team, and I you know playing scout team quarterback, playing scout team receiver, and tight end. I actually did the both. But I was just curious, you know, a lot of times that first year when you first get to college, you know, it's all it's a it's a big adjustment and it's a big change for a lot of guys. So I was just curious, you know, when you were out in scout team, you know, having to play receiver, having to play tight end, you know, did you see the picture of you, you know, putting up the record numbers you did back then? What's up, Katie? That's a great question, man. And definitely as a coach now, I, I love talking about those two years because I think it molded to what I became eventually. And yeah, I don't know. I never really saw like has goals to break all these records. It was just like, all right, man, I'm just going to put the best foot forward. I'm just going to get after it. And, you know, like for me, it was, Hey, I'm getting there. I get, you know, there's, they got this Juco guy coming in, Dominic Davis ended up being a total stud. Um, yeah, I, I didn't know exactly who he was. I'm like, man, I'll, I'll go in there and start. Not, you know, not even close. Um, and the best thing for me was to go on that scout team and definitely that second year going back to scout team. That's tough, but like a lot of the stuff I learned was was on that on that scout team. Like I got Trip Weaver there, um, coaching his tail off, getting after it, and like the relationship we built from that scout team was awesome. I mean, I, Trip Trip helped me a lot that third year when I you know wasn't named the starter and, and eventually was, but just kind of helped me stay in there and be ready. But yeah, man, I mean the, the plays out of the pocket, the getting smacked around, growing a little toughness. Like you said, tight end receiver, and you know that's first team D, man. That's, that's defensive coaches. They don't care if they're smacking the quarterback. They don't, you know, and they're just getting after it. And, you know, I remember like first year, uh, Josh Smith playing DN or, or maybe he was playing tackle. We were playing on this triple option deal. I fake it, pitch it. I'm standing there for at least two seconds. And Josh just knocks me. In my head. <laughs> and I'm like, wait a minute. Like the quarterbacks are, you know, and like, no one says the thing. Just like, dude, just get back to the huddle. Like, this is good. Like, all right. All right. Cool. So yeah, I mean, I, like, like, but that that made it like right. That just like built that like attitude, like chip my shoulder, like all right, man, like let's let's get going, like and just learning, like I said, learning that stuff. But to grind out on scout team for me, like I, I think again was was the best thing for me, and, and it really gave me the tools that I needed to do what I did later on. Yeah, I think the the big thing is just embracing the scout team. It's fun. You're going against the first team guys. You get a lot of you know. You really can tell, like, hey, these guys are, are legit. I was just curious, when you played receiver on scout team, when you played tight end, were those usually the coaches asking you? Or a lot of times when I did it, it was uh, we had two quarterbacks that over there, and uh, one quarterback we'd split like five and five, and then we would run out of a receiver, run out of a tight end, and I would always just go and jump in. I was just curious, you know, how did you end up playing receiver on the scout team or tight end? Yeah, 100%. You got to um, embrace that. And because if you don't, man, that's a long year. So you got to have fun with it and you got to get the guys around you. And, um, you know, what we would do is like after practice, I'd grab the receivers and start running our routes to make sure we were still good on like, you know, our stuff after looking at those plays. But now I'm with you, man. You had to jump in, right? So like if it was like a running quarterback, so like Hardy's playing scout team quarterback my first year. And uh, I'm like, I'm not going to stand around all practice. So I'm like, Put me in at supper. <laughs> I'm like three plays in it, playing tight end, just getting just slammed. I'm like, well, I don't know. If this is a great idea, but like it's all worth it, man. Right? Because then like your boys see you doing that, and you get done with practice, and it just it just builds that, right? Like you got a lot of respect from jumping in at receiver, and coaches respect that. I don't know. For me, it's fun, man. Like we're ball players, we're quarterbacks, but we're ball players. And if you get opportunity to play another position, man, jump in, and do it. Yeah, I agree. The best, the the what I loved on the scout team the best was blocking on the t the tight end, trying to hit a D lineman, and then getting tossed, or maybe just stock blocking the corner on those run plays. Those were my best memories. There's no way that you you enjoyed. That. <laughs> I actually enjoyed it, and my sophomore yeah, I, in high school, I played receiver. So. Okay, okay. Yeah, I was tied in in that triple offense, the triple uh, offense in Navy, just getting like slapped in the head. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was great. Great. Yeah, time. that's uh. Thank the Lord I never had to do that because I would have I would have quit right there. And the Navy week's the worst. I used to like oh god. I Even as a quarterback, I don't it want sucks. To run that. That. Yeah, you get drilled. Yeah, Shane, oh, we uh, your scout team days obviously were two years, and then you go battle the quarterback job in camp. Uh, the year act the year after that, you don't win the job. 
Um, to start with, you know, Rio Johnson wins it, goes into game one as the starter. Obviously, you know, you become the starter game three and kind of go on from there. But when you weren't named the starter after kind of going unrecruited in high school and then uh, scout team two years, was there ever a point mentally where you were like, can I do this? Because obviously, you know, as a quarterback, you know, mental's a huge side of the game. It's probably 80% of the game. Was there ever a time where you thought about transferring or you, you – and can I do this in college football? Or you know, what was your mental like not getting named the starter in year three? Yeah, that was tough, right? Because you kind of like trust your coaches and it's like, hey, you're going to go back to a scout team because we don't want you to be the third string guy. We want you to develop. And you're like, all right, like, I'll go there. I'll get more work. You know, and I felt like I had done the things in the off season, the leading thing he had talked about, just a lot of things that we discussed. Like, I thought I had done that. And, uh, yeah, not being named starter is tough, right? We're all competitors, man. We want to play. And uh, it was definitely tough to hear that. Um, I don't think I ever, like, it was never like when that happened, I'm out of here right now. It was like just, you know, upset, a little bit of anger. Um, and just like, I want to go prove on the field that I can do this. I think my confidence level is there. You know, like I had teammates who were like, you know, stick with it and seeing me in camp and the things I was doing at that point, I felt good about it. Like I said earlier, Trip Weaver talking to me, man, just like being there. Uh, my parents started getting letters from smaller schools in Texas telling me to come transfer immediately. Like, Damn. I don't know how that news got out that, like, you know what I mean? Just yeah. all of a sudden, I'm getting called from my parents. Like, hey, you got a couple letters today telling telling you to come back to Texas and go to these schools. <laughs> it's like, this is nuts. Dang. Um, so, yeah, it was South Carolina game, though. So, we're, we're in there. Uh, Baffer's half, they tell me I'm the starter at, at halftime. I go in there, my first pass, I throw a pick. They pull me out. <laughs> I'm like man that's it like that that, <laughs> that was that was my chance we're done uh luckily or unluckily for him you know I'll pick six happens next and i'm on the sideline Link's just like hey man i'm putting you back in you throw a pick like you're never gonna play i was like all right let's go do it <laughs> oh my so, god for me it was like man all right let's just go let her rip so uh you know we drive down we score 10 points and then uh you know it took us a while to get that offense going but you know, something that, like, I've always been told, like, once they, they give you, like, once they give you that, you know, don't give them a reason not to. So, I mean, man, I, was, I remember one game, like, I think it was UTEP, ankles all messed up, and they're like, hey, we're going to take you in before half, wrap you up. I'm like, no, you're not. There's still time <laughs> on that clock. I am not going in there until Heck half. Yeah. And uh, there's a clip. I throw a little fade pass to Hardy, and it's like I just catch it, you know, a little goal line fade. And uh, you can see me, like, kind of hobbling after I throw it. Like, it's just – terrible so i go in there <laughs> at it. i'm like man just wrap that sucker up as big as you need I'm not i'm not coming out of this because it was like because you had me right there you had another guy brad who you know could show he could do it. i mean just there was no way you know i was coming off that field once once i was going i love it hey that's uh that's the gunslinger mentality that brett Favre mentality dude heck yeah <laughs> drew has a question uh that one of the fans asked uh drew fire away what's up shane uh, appreciate you coming on the show but uh, on Twitter, uh, you definitely should know that this question's coming. But uh, Coach <laughs> Jamal asked, what opportunity would it take for you to come back and coach QBs at East Carolina? <laughs> yeah, I knew, I knew one of these was coming. Um, <laughs> yeah, man, Twitter's wild. It definitely is. There's a lot of questions to get asked. Uh, I mean, I love ECU. I love ECU to death. Um, I love that Mags is back coaching. I think that's awesome for the school and university and the program and everything. Um, you know, maybe there's a world where one day that happens, man. I'm, I'm very happy coaching high school right now and, and doing real estate, living where I live. Um, you know, got married a couple summers ago and we're just very happy in life we were at. Um, I had a couple opportunities to get back into the college coaching world um, a couple of years ago and just different timing wise, my dad's health. There was a couple of things that just I had to be here for and um, it didn't work out. You know, I think everything kind of happens for a reason. And, I'm happy where I'm at. And uh, like I said, though, like you never say never. Um, it could happen one day, but uh, I'll always be a fan, that's for sure. Heck, yeah. I, I believe one day you'll be back in the purple and gold. <laughs> hey, go, Drew. because I'm not coaching doesn't mean I'm not in the purple and gold now, right? You're right. You're right. <laughs> I'm in that sucker everywhere. It's a great, there's a great stat, too, being up here around Boise. Like the last loss Boise State had on their great run was ECU in that Hawaii Bowl. So in the Hawaii Bowl, oh yeah, I definitely uh, let that get known plenty. Around. <laughs> Jack, what's up, Shane? It's Jack here. Uh, just kind of hitting on what you were talking about right there. Just being in Idaho, uh, I came from the Mountain West, uh, transferred from there, so I've been to Boise multiple times. Uh, I've played there. It's a beautiful state, beautiful city. Uh, definitely kind of one of the hidden gems over there. 
in my opinion, that not too many people over here know about. I uh, was just kind of curious how that came about. Like, how'd you end up there coaching, uh, whether it was family, job, or, or whatever it was? Um, yeah, I mean, I've been coming up here, you know, since I can kind of remember just growing up, we always kind of came up here for, for summer or ski season or whatever it was. And, uh, man, this place was just really grooving more. I mean, you got this whole off season to football, to the bowl game, and then it was like season's done and I got to come up here for a few weeks after the bowl and it was just this nice getaway. And I just kind of really fell in love with the mountains. And, you know, once I was done with college, bounced around these different leagues, there were a couple of different opportunities. I was about to go work for Fox Sports at one point. Uh, and then I got another chance in, in, in Canada and then came back. And then I was here, got my real estate license. And I was kind of planning on doing the arena thing for a bit. Um, two back concussions. And I just kind of figured, you know, I, I better keep the head all intact while I still can. And right. Um, just, you know, my, my parents are up here and um, kind of just came back up here to kind of figure out if this was where I was going to want to stay or if I need something bigger like Boise. Like, I'm in a pretty small, it's a pretty small valley. It's special, but it is small. And so I kind of came back here to kind of figure out exactly where I wanted to be at. But just being up here, man, I mean, like two days ago, we had a big snowstorm. It's snowing right now. That's what I keep looking at. It's just dumping right now. Oh, uh, so Monday morning, it just snowed a bunch. So buddy of mine called me and asked if I want to catch a few runs before I go to work. I said, why not? So there's just a lot of, a lot of freedoms up here. I mean, a couple of years ago, drive 30 minutes, went and shot a big elk and cleaned them that night with my buddy. Ooh, I mean, there's just yeah, that's awesome, kind of things. I don't know if I have doing on a regular basis, but I, I certainly love all of it. Yeah. I think, uh, one of the Idaho potato bowls, uh, that I went to in Boise, we went to it's bogus basin right there. The mountain. Are yeah, you that's familiar it, with that's that? Ski mountain Boise. Yep. Yeah, so we went snow tubing down that uh, as a team, and like our head coach and stuff obviously went, and we were just you fly down those mountains on those tubes. It was pretty fun, one of the most fun bull experiences I've had. But Boise's definitely, like I said, a hidden gem. It's it's beautiful, and you get all the seasons of the year there. And like you just said, there's so much to do. It's not a uh, it's not old G Vegas though. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's get back to the football, the, your ECU stories, and all that. Uh, 2013, another under recruited kid walks on campus. Uh, Zay Jones from Texas. What was it about him that made him so successful as a freshman? And then obviously what he's doing now, he's just continued the success. What was it about him early on kind of that you saw uh, that quarterback receiver relationship, obviously had a great freshman year. What was it about him early on? Yeah, he came in and it was like, Hey, Texas forever. We had just a little handshake. It's good to go. But man, he was just so smart. And like as a freshman, so physical receiver and understood what we were doing and um, just kind of had natural feel like he kind of just had all these things that just kind of came and then put that into his work ethic and just you know getting after it and I think he saw Hardy and wanted to be right there and uh, you know definitely pushed on on Hardy's heels to make Hardy better and made Zay better and just made our whole receiving group better I mean um, Zay is definitely a special talent obviously still doing it at a, you know the highest level there is right now which is awesome to see um, and just you know I think having probably that competitive brothers and his, you know, his dad and that family just, yep. yeah, I just, I think he kind of had like kind of everything, you know what I mean? Like it wasn't like he was the fastest, but he had great speed. He had good hands. He could run good routes. He had good field defenses. He worked his tail off. I mean, he just kind of had all these great things. And then you throw in that confidence to come in here freshman year, just like, Hey, I want to do this. And like just no flinching at all in any of those big games. Heck yeah, he definitely comes from a football family and ECU family. His dad was a legend here, won a, a huge peach bowl here. So, Caden, what do you got? Yeah, speaking of big game, Shane, I was curious. You know, you played in a time in ECU that we don't know if we're going to get again or when it when it will be in the future, playing against Virginia Tech, Carolina State, and South Carolina. Like, pretty much every season you, you played. So, I was just curious, out of those big games I just named, what were some of the big games you were looking for the most out of those four? Yeah, I mean, that, that going up to North Carolina, um, my, uh, my my redshirt junior year. Um, I mean, that was that was huge because we I mean we played terrible my first time up there, and then you know having not one up there in thirty or so years, and then having you know the school newspaper, everybody uh, pick North Carolina to win, and just all that stuff to go up there and put fifty five on them, and then just I think everyone was just so fired up, man, because we kind of saw what we were, were kind of able to do. We weren't. We didn't play against Virginia Tech very well, like two weeks before that, and uh, there was just a little frustration because it was like, no, we like, we have this, and we just didn't do it. And then like to get it rolling, um, and it's something we knew we could do that game. But 
you know, I mean, playing at Virginia Tech, um, enter Sandman when they're walking out there, like it hyped me up, maybe more than hyped them up. I was pumped listening <laughs> to that song as they were coming out of that, that tunnel, man. I was like, here we go. Um, getting to play against like the D coordinator, Bud Foster, had been there for a long time, and a really good D coordinator. Yeah, I think just those environments. I mean, even the South Carolina games where it's like 80,000, it's just insane. You can almost feel the, the, the ground rumble and, you know, have an opportunity down there in my senior year where a game that was close that, we, you know, looking back, we always say we should have won. So, yeah, it was a lot of fun, man. And um, I think that I just think playing those guys, playing those bigger schools is always something that, you know, helped that group, helped our group um, kind of get into the season and just like, kind of always made us have that chip on our shoulder, right? Just like, oh, these are the guys that are they're saying this or that. Like, after beating North Carolina, they're saying, he's still saying stuff the week before the next year's game. Like, <laughs> dude, just come play. Like, you ain't going to say anything. Um, you're just firing us up more, and he did. But, uh, <laughs> you know, that's, that's the way it goes. That's, uh, that's that pirate mentality, though. I think – as an AD, which we, we have no Power 5 games this year on the football schedule. It's like the first time in like 40 years. So as an AD, I think I would definitely like to see that in the future. Shane, y'all obviously took ECU football to heights and places that many thought or wanted it to go but didn't know if they could get there. And then the year after you left, obviously, they go 5-7. and seven. Uh, Ben Kirk goes down. Those guys go down. Ruff gets fired, and you just see the program fall for the next couple of years. What was that like, seeing – you know, you guys, like I said, take it to heights that, you know, that you know you took it to, to plummeting, to firing rough, to seeing where the program goes next. Yeah, I mean, obviously that's tough, man. I mean, you know, it would, like when Beggar goes down, you know, and I had seen him and he'd been in that, our quarterback room for a while. And I knew, you know, this kid, that kid had an arm. He was really smart. He was athletic. And it was just like, all right, they're going to be ripping um, you know, we kind of, I kind of figured Link was on his way at some point out. I mean, before my senior year, there was toxic. He was doing interviews and this and that. Yep. Um, we had Dave Nickel coming back and, and Ben Kurt and pretty much the whole staff other than that. And I was like, all right, they'll be good to go. Like, well, you know, excited to watch those guys. And, yeah, those injuries that are happening. And then, you know, seeing Ruff fired. I mean, I <laughs> talked to anyone in Pirate Nation that whole year. And you guys hit on it last week and just – yeah, devastated, man. Absolutely devastated to see that happen. Just thinking that, you know, you had someone there that was going to be there no matter what. That wasn't a guy looking for the next job, you know. Yeah. That was a guy who wanted that town, university. He wanted everything for that town to just keep growing and be bigger. And so, um, yeah, just totally crushed for him. Uh, was very upset. Didn't didn't want to talk to many people, like, around uh, the program for a bit after that. Uh, but – at the end of the day, right? Like pirates forever, pirate for life. Like absolutely, you, want, you still want you still want what's best, man. And you never root against anybody. So, and like you guys saw it last week, like to come in after rough. That's that's a tough deal to do as a head coach, right? Yeah. All the anger and everything that was going on. And, um, so that's a tough deal. But I mean, I think you guys, you in particular, like what you guys had to deal with uh, was stuff that I didn't. You know what I mean? Man. Um, to battle it out and stick it out in, in a time where it kind of started getting to transferring was okay. For you to drop that bombshell story last week. <laughs> you know, Had to. Uh, we, don't, we, we don't have to get into who that was. Maybe, you know, off camera or something. Yeah, I'll let but you know off camera. Of, it got a lot of traction. It got way more traction than I thought but, I was going to get. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot, man. I mean, that's, that's it's one of the bigger followings, right? Like, that's what ECU is, and that's, that's why, like – you have these crazy, you know, fans, but that's that's what makes ECU to you. Like they they want it. They want it to be a good fit. And I'd rather be a part of a program that has like expectations like that. And maybe you're a little more negative when they should be, but they want it to be great. You know, they want they're negative because they can see what it can be. And uh, you know, I I beat Mike and and making making time. I definitely wanted to see you guys and, and be there for you know last game because just I, I I appreciated what you guys stepped through and and what you guys did at your time. I mean, obviously, like, I look at mine, yeah, I wish a couple things went a different way. I know everyone feels that way in their career, but, you know, I appreciated what you guys stuck through and what you guys did with, with everything that was going on, um, apparently with boosters as well. Um, um, so it was good to kind of, you know, at least come see you guys. But I, I, I truly believe, you know, last year was just a small dip. I think I went on Pirate Radio, you know, a couple of weeks ago, just fired up, man. I think – I think – Houston's doing everything he possibly can in this offseason to get this thing rocking. And yep. I just – I think we're headed in a great direction right now. Me too, dude. And first of all, I just want to say appreciate you coming. I remember senior day, like, 
I mean, obviously, I grew up being from Greenville. You, know, you were the guy I idolized and like playing in the yard. I always picture myself being you and being the quarterback here. So uh, seeing where you know you took ECU and where you, Ruff, and Lincoln and those guys took ECU, I envisioned that. Did I get them all the way there? No, but um, you know, a lot of people obviously like to compare our careers. Um, I think we served two different purposes. You know, you wanted you your purpose was to you know show and take ECU to places that they never took before, and then. You know, I, my purpose was more to get back to, you know, seeing that in the future. And uh, like you said, obviously, this year didn't go as well as, you know, we hoped. But, you know, I think it was just kind of a fluke year, honestly, with NIL. We're still getting used to that. We, Like you said, Houston's got some huge transfers coming in. Uh, Jack, what were you going to say on that? Yeah, I was just going to say, you're fired up. Uh, you talked about how you went on Pirate Radio. You've talked with Coach Houston. Uh, obviously, you've been paying attention to the moves that he's made this offseason season. Um, a lot of players uh, and our former former teammates listen to this. If you could say anything to them, just about how to bounce back, uh, and kind of just like your some maybe some words of inspiration, words of wisdom for this next season, what would they be? Well, I've heard Houston talk. I'm sure they got plenty of inspiration right now. <laughs> yeah, um, but man, I, man, I would just say like, just be a pirate, man. Who cares what everyone else says? Like, right. put in the work, and that's kind of like I remember after we didn't make that ball game, um, and I wasn't playing. I was like. I mean, I put up papers in the uh, locker room. I was like, hey, seven on seven's at four. You guys really don't want to go to bowl game again? Like, it was just like, I don't care about your feelings anymore. Yep. I care about changing this thing. I care about wins. I care about getting dudes who want to go do that. And so I know there's a group in that locker room that's fired up. I know those new guys came there to prove some stuff. So I just say, man, go be a pirate. Don't listen to anyone else that, that you're not listening to in that locker room. Go do the damn thing. Yeah, block out the noise. So it has to be. There was uh, we went through some dark days, and you were talking about just like getting guys out the seven on seven. I remember like when I first got there, it was like incredibly hard to get the guys even to go out there, and like that was even a shock from coming from a high school. Was like, you know, obviously Coach Mo was still there. It was like, you know, I literally would have to text individually guys and be like, dude, are you coming or not? And then like even sometimes, weirdly enough, we played with some of the same guys. Like I played with three or four guys that played with you when they were younger. So. Um, we can talk about that off air. I'm not trying to trash anyone right now. I'm sure you can guess who they are. Uh, can you have one more question? <laughs> we, we still play with the same guys he played with on Fortnite every day. Yeah, so. <laughs> Steven Baggett. Steven Baggett's our boy. He said to say what's up. So uh, shout out to Baggett. Yeah, what's up, Steven? The bag man. <laughs> can you got one more question? Uh, no, nah, I'm pretty good. I don't know. Maybe uh, after a big win, I know what me and Holton were doing. We were always celebrating with the boys going to Pantana Bob's or still like, <laughs> How are you guys celebrating back in 14? Yeah, I mean, I don't know what the names were back then. I guess there were still PBs. I mean, shoot, last time I was talking to Holton, man, I think I had had uh, two or five too many in Greenville. <laughs> hey, me too, um, me too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I mean, it was always about that, man. I, and I was luckily, lucky enough, like when I was a freshman, Andrew Bodenheimer had a house. It was kind of the football house. The guys would always come there and it'd be whoever and anybody who wanted to come. And it was never like, oh, you're need a player or any of this. So, my uh, junior year, we got a house that's no longer there. It got torn down. There's, I think there's uh, apartments there now next to the old Harris Teeter. Um, so we had a house there, and we always had everybody over, man. And it was it didn't matter who it was, who you were, man. You were you were coming. And then at that point, it was to wherever we were going. We were going together. You know, from there, obviously, people have their preferences on different uh, locations to go to uh, <laughs> down there in Greenville. But uh, man, it was all it was always like we we're all going to come together. At first, and then from there, go wherever. But yeah, I mean, just like like it's that family deal, and uh, you know, I think, like I said, I, I heard that before. You know, Ruff and Lincoln had really even been there, and so, you know, I assume that's that's always going to be there at ECU. Oh, for sure. We uh, the football house ended up being our house once we kind of did that because I remember growing up like the Halloween stories, at ECU and stuff, and then like cops kind of <laughs> shut down Halloween then. So I was like, dude, I got to keep it going. So we always do the, the biggest Halloween parties. It was a blast. We dude. didn't keep it going, but <laughs> Halloween, not the we whole entire city, but it was still fun. Uh, Shane, appreciate you joining dude. Um, obviously one of the best ever to play here. So, you know, appreciate you supporting the show and, uh, for coming on, dude. Yeah. Hey, I appreciate you guys, man. Love what you're doing. Um, appreciate you having me as next. And the first, the first interview you guys have done are huge guys. And I uh, really appreciate you guys asking me, but uh, you guys are want to come up, do some hunting, do some snowboarding. You guys are more than welcome to come on up. Oh, for sure. Oh, we we'll yeah. have to hit you up on that one. Yeah, we'll take you up <laughs> on for sure. See you, man. Right on. See you guys. And there goes the train. And the- <laughs> Sounding <laughs> it off, baby. What a um, way to go out. <laughs> that was. Dude, 
one thing that I took from him, obviously great guy, ECU legend. Genuine. Uh, very genuine. Like, you, it meant a lot to me. He talked about coming to my senior day. Um, obviously, growing up, looking up to him, like that was a big deal. I got a chance to meet him and Coach Houston, literally just sat down and talked to ECU ball, just talked ball in general, um, but just talked about one of probably the most, the best conversation that I've ever had just about the future of ECU football because I was about to play my last game there. I was sitting beside Shane Carter, a guy that I idolized, and then the head coach, the guy who's going to take it there. Uh, we just got to sat down and sat down and just kind of talked about. You know, this place is special. We all knew it was special. We've all felt it. Me and Coach Houston, obviously, we're trying to take it to the next step or get it back to getting to the next step. Um, so that was a, a conversation that I'll cherish forever, and he had a lot of insight. I remember um, he told me before we ended up sucking on senior day, getting killed by Houston, but he was like, dude, my senior day, I played horrible. All the seniors played horrible. Just, like, go talk to those guys and make sure that they're locked in, ready to go. Don't get caught up in the moment. So I go in. I'm like, look, boys, let's not get caught up in the moment, like – it's a big game, like, but it's senior day. It's our last time. Let's just go out there, play free, play fun, and tank Dell, Omar. Don't look. Yeah, <laughs> we got killed. Yeah. Now, after the game, we ended up uh, having some drinks together and hanging out. Him and Scarphone and some of those guys. Um, and I was like, dude, you called it, brother. We, yeah, uh, we sucked that game. We're but uh, yeah, so that was a conversation I'll cherish forever. Obviously, you know, great guy. ECU go. This next segment is brought to you by Worth Chiropractic. Worth Chiropractic is your local local choice for chiropractic care, automobile accident. They'll specialize in treating automobile accidents, slips and falls while working closely with your attorney. Every day, back and neck pain or sports related injuries, they'll offer safe, natural care to, to get you back to being you. Call one eight hundred back doc today. And let's get into the Super Bowl. Obviously, Sunday, uh, Jack. You're wearing the hat. I know you're bandwagon this year. You just became a fan. Talk about what are your expectations? We're as not a just going to move on from that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what Stop. are your you, expectations? You've seen the baby pictures. I saw a born and raised. In a, were you in like a Seahawks hat last year? See, now you're just lying. <laughs> <laughs> what are your expectations going in this? As a Niners fan, um, I don't think they have chance. So, <laughs> I'm just. I'm just what are your expectations, Jack? Uh, I think it's a redemption game, and I think the guys are kind of bought in on that a little bit. Uh, I don't think they're giving it too much attention to the point where like they should be like nervous or anything. But I mean, the last time they went to the Super Bowl, lost to the Chiefs. Uh, I think it was definitely a way better matchup this year than it was in the past year. They had Tyree Kill. A lot of our big stars were young uh, rookies like Bosa in that game. So uh, I think the guys are a little loose. Um, I'm excited to watch Purdy. I think this is his final opportunity to kind of silence all the haters. Uh, he's obviously kind of got a lot of heat throughout the playoffs. Um, Caden's over here laughing at me, but he's faded Patrick Mahomes for the last three weeks, so <laughs> he can't even laugh now. Um, we understand he's a Swifty, but no, I'm, I'm stoked. Uh, obviously a little nervous, um, but I'm just ready to watch it, ready for the boys to go crazy. The thing is with me is compare the last couple Super Bowls or just any games in general, but definitely Super Bowls, it's it's a quarterback matchup. People are going to look at the quarterback matchup. Not that Brock Purdy isn't – look, he's a Super Bowl quarterback. He's in there, and if he wins, he's on another level. He might even pass the Dak level, which is crazy to say, but Dak can't win in the playoffs. Yeah. Lamar hasn't won in the playoffs. If Purdy goes and wins the Super Purdy's Bowl, he's on – more a, playoff games than both of them. Yeah, he's going to be on a different level, I think, at least. Obviously, he's a great team, great play caller, but does it worry you at all that – if you compare the quarterbacks, you talked about it. Mahomes is chasing that Brady greatness, that dynasty, and then Purdy is, you know, 49ers already lost with Garoppolo, who's a better quarterback than Purdy. And then, um, I'm just, <laughs> you could serve out hot takes. No, I'm just more. kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, I'm just trying to get to you. But does it worry you, Purdy versus Mahomes? Um, yes, a little bit. I'd be lying if I said no. But I do like the fact that Kyle Shanahan is like a young, innovative coach. Uh, where I believe that he's going to find ways like he's done throughout the season to kind of take some pressure off of Purdy. And uh, I think the Chiefs running defense is one of their weak spots. So I think CMC is posed to have a big game. But if they really crack down on that, I think it opens up Shanahan's ability to get Debo the ball, Kittle the, Kittle the ball in those kind of different scenarios. Ayuk, um, you know, you see a lot of situations where Debo might be in the backfield and CMC is kind of in almost like that CFL like pretty deep slot yeah. spot. Um, so I think there's some different things. I think Shanahan's going to be prepared. Um, and I think he's going to be able to take some of that pressure off of Brock. 
Yeah, I think the key is getting the lead early or at least keeping the game tied early because obviously Chiefs run defense, you talked about, I think it's ranked 28th in the league. The Ravens ran the ball great on them, averaged 5.5 yards a carry, and then just stopped running it, got to the pass. And I think that's where um, – Tom- Time of possession is yeah, going to be huge. I think so. And the thing that I'm worried about, if I was a 49ers fan, if I was you, I would be worried that if you get behind early, yeah, it's hard you're going to have back. to throw the ball. You know, and, scrape. Yeah. Yes. I want to hear Jack say, how does the Chiefs beat the Niners? What's their game plan there if you were in the Chiefs locker room? I mean, last week, David Montgomery, or two weeks ago with the Lions, uh, they started off running the ball really well. And Pacheco has proved himself to be a tough runner this playoff run. So I think if they open up that game, um, that really opens up their whole playbook and allows Patty Mahomes to do his thing. And so if you get that run game started up and, and going pretty strong, it's going to be hard to stop them on offense. There we go. I Jack's agree. picking the Chiefs. <laughs> <laughs> Jack, um, do we have permission? I got Drew to take a picture last when they played the Lions of you and you posted on our Twitter at Holt Ayler Show. And you made us take it down because you were mad in the picture. In the moment, yeah. So do we have permission to send updates to our fans on at Holt Ayler show on X throughout the game? We're going to get a video pregame. I already talked to Drew before the show, before you got here. I was like, look, Drew, I want you to video Jack, say how he's feeling, like the vibes are going to be up after first quarter two. Like just, we got to show the fans how you're feeling. I mean, you're from all the way from Cali. You're evidently a, a Niners fan. So we got to show the fans how you're feeling. Throughout Winning the game. or losing. Winning or losing, you gotta agree we, to we it. We might now. be able to work out some. <laughs> we could have the guy write up a contract for it. Yeah, we. We'll uh, I so got a, I got a hot take in the Super Bowl. All right, though. let's hear it. I'm not looking forward to it. I think we've, and I can explain this. I can explain it. I think everyone knew the Niners from week what three, week four, they were gonna make it to the Super Bowl, and the Chiefs, Patrick Mahomes, and their whole situation this year, like everyone's just like been against the Chiefs. I en- embraced it after the last couple weeks of losing to them on my bets. But the thing is, think of this matchup like Tom Brady at the pinnacle of New England Patriots versus Tom Brady at the pinnacle of New England Patriots. We don't want to see that matchup. People have been pissed to see that matchup. But in a couple of years, you know, we'd be appreciative of the matchup. But right now, I think people wanted something different. They wanted the story of Detroit. They wanted the story of Lamar. But I'm just not looking forward to it. That's a hot take from me. I mean, yeah, you did. Purdy, the, Purdy and the 49ers, though, had trouble midseason this year, and the Chiefs did too. So, like, Chiefs had to go on the road this year. It was a little different. Like, obviously, yeah, the beginning of the year, you think Niners, Chiefs are the best. I would think the best two teams. I thought Ravens, Chiefs, but I think everyone's Lamar just, just hadn't won in the playoffs. Yeah. So, that's my thing. And then, like, I don't know, episode one, I called the Browns to go to the Super Bowl. So, that, uh, <laughs> I, I, go I think too it's going to well. be entertaining. I think it'll be entertaining. I'm just saying, like, Taylor Swift and the whole Chiefs thing has tired the like the guys of watching so football. So root for the Niners. And like, then the okay. Niners is like we all knew like from the playoffs. No matter when they struggled, like they're gonna bounce back. I think people, if you're from California, you're gonna root for the Niners. If you're from Middle America, Kansas, Kansas, you're gonna root for the Kansas City. So what's Chiefs. your projection? I think it, Niners are up at half, and then Patrick Mahomes figures out how to win it. I think the script. I think Mahomes. You believe Taylor, in the script. I just don't see Mahomes, the NFL letting Mahomes, Taylor Swift, and Kelsey go out with a loss. What do you think? Do you see it? I think someone's got to end the, the dream. <laughs> Someone has to end we'll the see. dream. Yeah. Drew. Fred Warner, Drake Greenwald, what are you, the dream uh, killers. <laughs> what do you project, Drew? What do you think is going to happen? Um, I know I've said this like every single week, but I think the Niners are the better team. I mean, throughout the regular season, people were questioning if the Chiefs were even going to make it past the wild card round, which obviously they did. But – uh. I feel like when teams play the Chiefs, like it's like they just kind of crap the bed. Like they don't do mm-hmm. what they're good at. Like the Ravens last week, you're the number one rush team in the league, and oh, let's play the Chiefs and drop back 85 percent of the time. Like do what you're good at. And I mean, Kyle Shanahan, he's not going to stop what works. So if Christian McCaffrey's getting five yards a pop, guess who's probably getting 25 carries? Christian McCaffrey. Like he's not going to stop what works. And Drew, I feel like other teams just kind of did that. Drew, great call out. If the Niners quit doing what they're good at, check down passes. And Purdy starts throwing it deep, they're in trouble. Another hater. They're in trouble. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I think uh, if I was a Niners fan, it would worry me that the Chiefs are obviously going to score points. They're going to score points in the Super Bowl. Andy Reid's too good of an offensive mind. One of the best quarterbacks ever, one of the best tight ends ever, all combined and have done it before in the Super Bowl. It's, it's going to be hard not to. Mahomes, I think, only threw for 186 last year, but they still ended up winning. So, like, they're going to find a way to win. Mahomes didn't have the best game. They still won last year. That would be my biggest fear as a Niners fan. I also think early on the Niners are going to come out, establish the run, try to run the ball. I think it's going to be a 14-7-ish game going into the second quarter. And then from there, it's a toss-up. But I do have the Chiefs 
ending up winning. I think they're going to get ahead and uh, Niners are going to get away from the run in the second half. They'll, they'll continue to run the ball. CMC will get a lot of carries in the first half, and then I think it's just going to get away from them. But when they played Detroit, they were down, and they didn't stop running the ball, and they eventually came back. That so. is true, but the, just the pressure of the Super Bowl in general, I think, is going to – I don't know, there's pressure to the Super Bowl, clearly. Exactly. I think knowing it's the last game, knowing you have to win this game, like obviously they did last week too or two weeks ago, but it's just the pressure of the Super Bowl is going to get to them a little bit. It was a, I think it was a little bit of a freak thing that they continued to run the ball, and Detroit handed them yeah. turnovers. Dan like Gambles. It was just a freak. Most yeah, definitely. He gave the game away. Dan Gambles. But it's hard for me to think that the Chiefs would get up by – Three touchdowns. I'm not saying three, but even two, dude. Second half, two touchdowns in the Super Bowl. Like you're gonna, if you if you're an OC, I would de- you got to think. All right, we got to at least we can't waste time. Here. I don't think that's panic mode for the for the Niners. We're gonna see. So you you're taking the Chiefs. No, <laughs> you're taking the Niners. Okay, then. So <laughs> as a Chiefs hater, this entire playoff season uh, and the whole hater of the whole thing going on, I'm mourning to embrace it. I can't fade Patrick Mahomes one more time. If I lose again, I'll kick an idiot. So I'm embracing him. All right, boys. So Super Bowl, we'll see if uh, if the picks come through. We got our betting segment up next. We'll see if uh, if the boys uh, take any of the bets. But before we get to our betting segment, we have a new sponsor. Look, the show is growing. We're building a new studio right now. Um, obviously, with the show growing, we're going to have more sponsors. And this new sponsor is... Wayne Hardy Law. Thank you to Wayne Hardy Law. If you if you're in a car accident or just need a lawyer, Wayne Hardy Law and his team will make the difference. Treat you like family. They call it the Wayne Hardy difference, and that is what they do. They will help you get a rental car, help you file your insurance, as well as obviously get your claim. Wayne Hardy Law. They treat you like family. That's the Wayne Hardy difference. And thank you to those guys for supporting us. Uh, obviously, a huge company in Greenville, and we support them. We, we couldn't grow without more support and generous support like them, so appreciative of them for yeah, sure. Super yeah. appreciative. I actually took the LSAT twice. It didn't work out for you me. You didn't want so. to be uh, part of Wayne Hardy Law's team? No, I just... <laughs> too wasn't in the cards. That no, wasn't in the cards. And I'm then, here now. actually, we, we have another sponsor as well, Mad Mesquite Goose Club, a new one too. They are um, literally just going to send us stuff to kind of give away, to have on set. So shout out to those guys too. We're going to get some of their stuff in next week. You'll see us wearing it. We'll post it on Twitter. We'll um, have it throughout the show and, and give it some to you guys too. So shout out to those guys as well. What is it? Mad Mesquite Goose Club. Good looking gear. It is. So uh, I just want we'll to see it if next I can week. Say it. I'm not, if, if I have to ever say Madam it, so, it's uh, in North Carolina. I, you know me, I can barely talk sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys, let's get to our betting segment. The boys go seven and one fire. last week. Hey, Drew is on fire today with the. Uh, let's do it. Drew's on fire with the production. He's getting comfortable back there. Yeah, the boys go seven and one. Look, this is the preseason. Like we said, March 11th when it becomes legal, uh, we're going to be ready to go. We post our bets every week at Holt Ayler Show. Just so you can follow them. So, look, when March 11th comes, you don't even got to think about it. Just follow the boys. We're posting our record 7-1 and one last week. It's a lot of money if you're, if you're riding with the boys last week. So uh, Technically, 5-1. and one. We both picked Carolina. Okay, 5-1 yeah. is still. But, see, Jack called it. It's two separate bets. Yeah, so and we, uh, don't, we don't talk about it before the show. It's like we're all coming right. in this Wait, I took the spread. He took the money line. So, so it's two different bets. Yeah, yeah technically. Bets. Yeah. So, Caden, who do you have this week? Oh, starting with me, you took me off guard. So I, you know me, I've been crushing college basketball, but I'm taking uh, two games. There was a lot of games on the board this week. Uh, college basketball Saturdays are super exciting. Uh, I think we talked about it. We might even just come out with college basketball Saturdays conversations uh, on Fridays. But I'm looking at uh, Kansas versus Baylor. Uh, Baylor's traveling to Lawrence. Kansas just came off a heartbreaking uh, Sunflower Seed showdown loss to Kansas State. Uh, I think it was one of those games, though. Kansas State has struggled this year. They've been super inconsistent. They were, you know, in Manhattan as a away game for Kansas. And the Big 12, you just don't win on the road, especially a rivalry Big 12 game. And I think for Kansas, yes, it was a rivalry game, but Baylor, you know, a top 15 team team in the nation, I think they might have been looking ahead. And they got in foul trouble early. And now Baylor coming to Lawrence, I'm taking Kansas. You just don't win on the road in the Big 12, especially on big Big 12 games. Big Big 12 games. We hear that? Joe Dooley, uh, former so, East Carolina head coach, yeah, is on the I was, staff. I was watching Joe Dooley get a little freaked out on that, that Sunflower Seed showdown. <laughs> so, love to see that. So, I'm taking Kansas. Uh, probably be a really tight spread. I'm a spread guy. So, I'm going to take the spread, Kansas uh, versus Baylor. And then a couple other games, I was just getting lost. I'm like, do I stay in the Big 12? Because I know Big 12 teams don't win on the road. But I decided to go against my what I like to do is don't bet it on away teams. So, I'm betting on away team here. 
but it's Illinois versus Michigan State. So Illinois at Michigan State, and I I won a, a bet on Michigan State earlier this year, and but that on that bet they scored twelve points in twelve minutes, and I was like pulling my hair out. And they have to be one of the most inconsistent team in college basketball. And Illinois is a top ten team, and Illinois is a really good basketball team. So I'm taking Illinois at Michigan State because I'm betting Michigan State gets super inconsistent. They might go hot the first half, but second half they might score 12 points in 12 minutes. So I'm taking Illinois on the road, going against the home favorites. I like it. Um, so we post these bets, like I said, on at Whole Ayler Show. If you see these shirts right here, it's local politics, but we uh, we will be giving some of these away at Whole Ayler Show on X too. So comment at us, see that you show our bets, that you watch all the way to this point, and uh, we'll be giving some of those away. Drew, who do you got this week? Yeah, so uh, I'm going with two Super Bowl game picks, uh, player props. Um, so Mahomes' line for rushing yards is at 26 and a half. Uh, I think that's pretty low. He's hit that in every single playoff game. He might have barely missed it in Miami, but it was like blistering cold. And um, for, for, for the Super Bowls, he averages 35 rushing yards a game. So everything's on the line. Uh, he's not going to run out of bounds. Well, he probably will, but like – you know, like, he, he's going to be fighting for yards, so I think he'll hit that pretty easy. And then my other one is CMC for over 18 rushing attempts. Um, he's the best player on the team. Uh, you need to get him the ball. And uh, it's like I said, it's a Super Bowl. Uh, they're not holding nothing back. So uh, I think CMC gets the ball about 20 times. He deserves the ball 20 times. Uh, and, yeah, that, that's my picks. Yeah, I like that, with, especially like- with the the – the Chiefs' bad rush defense. If they stick to their game plan, yeah. then they're good. And like I already said, I think they're going to try to run the ball early a lot, establish the run. So, dude, Drew's getting so good at convincing these. And it seemed like too good to be true when he's telling <laughs> well, them. Qu- taking them. <laughs> one question I had was he said Patrick Mahomes' Super Bowl stat. Is Patrick Mahomes baby goat now? Do we call him baby goat? Until no, we just Tom Brady? not yet. <laughs> ba- goat Jr.? Baby goat? I don't know. What no, do you think, Drew? Just until he get, becomes good. Uh, let, let's see how this Super Bowl goes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Jack, let's go with your next bet. Uh, before I talk about my bets, um, you know, you, you mentioned our record last week. You mentioned March becoming a big big month when betting gets legal. And uh, me personally, I want to be durable. I want to be reliable. I want to be something that you could just trust. Kind of like an Anson belt. Oh, yes, sir. So this is turned into an Anson belt call out for them. Shout out them. You could find them at AnsonBelt.com. They have over 10,000 combinations. I'm actually wearing one right now. It's kind of my favorite, like, everyday one. It's a little flexible. You could wear it golfing like you wear it how, how, how I do every day. Um, honestly, just a great, reliable belt. Great guy. Great company. Caden, you think you found something over there, right? On Anson Belt? Oh, yeah, you did. I, I didn't realize we were going into the Anson Belt commercial <laughs> right there. That was amazing. I was like, oh, I thought you were talking about his bets. But, yes. Anson Belt, I, I woke up this morning, I was on Instagram, they're running 20% off flash sale. So go on Instagram, go on the website, and get 20% off while it lasts, because I have no clue how long it lasts. Anson Belt, pause, AnsonBelt.com. Go check them out, we appreciate those guys. Jack, get your bets. All right, so got to do a Niner one, obviously. Um, big, big weekend for us. I'm going Debo over 58 and a half receiving yards. Like I kind of mentioned earlier, I think uh, the Chiefs are going to for sure make a a point to stop Christian McCaffrey, and that's going to allow uh, Kyle to dial up some stuff for Debo and Kittle. So I think Debo's going over 58 and a half receiving yards. Additionally, in the past couple big games, uh, Eagles, Cowboys, two weeks ago with the Lions, he's hit that, so I'm confident in that. My second bet is Saturday night, the Canes money line versus the New Jersey Devils. Uh, the Canes took a loss on Tuesday night versus the Canucks by one uh, one score. And so I think they're going to bounce back at PNC Arena on a, on a Saturday night. Um, they just beat them before the All-Star break, too. So Jersey might come in a little hot looking for redemption, but I don't think they get it. Speaking of that, I'd like to give a quick Canes call out. Um, we're a podcast for the people, for sure. One of the YouTube comments uh, kind of recommended that we talk about the Canes because they're a Carolina team. And, uh, you know, we talked about it, and they're 100% right. Um, I'm a big Canes fan. I think the environment is top notch. Uh, watching hockey in person, I didn't really become a hockey fan until I transferred over here, um, and that's kind of a thing that me and my girlfriend do. We love going to the games, and that environment—it's—it's it's the best sport to watch live. It's very in my fun. Opinion. Those playoff games are electric. Yeah, it's nonstop. I think you might even have a story. I don't know if we want to go I into did. that today. 
I'll get into it. Yeah, so uh, I told you yesterday when you were talking about the Canes, you talking about the YouTube comment. First of all, this is the people show. Um, we see all the comments on literally everything. We see the messages. And look, we're going to ask the hard questions to these guests. We have, like, we're teaming up with Pirate Radio. They have, they want us to be this. They want us to be the people show. We have no, no one telling us not to say anything, not to ask anything. We are not scared of anything, to ask anything. So when we talk, when we announce these guests at Whole Ayler Show on Twitter, Tweet us these questions. If they're hard questions, we got some balls. We'll ask them because that's what it is. And we got <laughs> get, a relationship with get these. Get back to your Canes. Yes, I want to hear sorry, PNC. This is people show. So, yeah. So, um, so, I go to the Canes game. It was the Rangers-Canes game. Uh, playoffs. playoffs game. Yeah. Rowdy. And me and my brother were tailgating. We were just – the doors were open in the car. We were sitting, like, outside the car kind of in the front. And we had, like – we finished the 12-pack. And there was two well, – there was two left in the 12-pack. We were like, dude, we got to go in the game. But, like – we're a little key already blitz, but we can't leave two right here, no dude. We're two big dudes. Behind. Yeah. Uh, so I was like, all right, Pate, let's shotgun, dude. We got to shotgun these. And he was like, he's never shotgunned before. He's more of like a chug, chug, beer chug guy. Um, but I was like, all right, we're shotgunning Peyton. Like, we got to do this. So we get it ready and uh, we go to like the back of the car, kind of so in case it sprays anywhere. And I'm like halfway through and I hear, Holt Nailers, is that you? And I was like, Oh my gosh, who is this about to be when I finish? So I finished the, the shotgun and I look up and it's uh it evidently it was Campbell fans and they were like, dude, we recognize you, like we're Campbell fans, we're uh boosters for Campbell, like it was right before senior year. We played year. them that year. Yeah. yeah. So they're like, We're excited to go see y'all next year. Like, uh, we know a lot about you guys, obviously being in North Carolina, and I'm sitting there thinking, and I think I told him I was like, Well, I'm really representing East Carolina well right here, boys. <laughs> like Absolutely. all you hear is about the party school, and I'm in here mid shotgun, the starting quarterback two months before the season. So yeah, that's my that's my cane story. We took care of business. Um, we did all right. I think yeah. you represented ECU perfectly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I did. I did. But what were your bets again? Uh so I did Debo over fifty eight and a half receiving yards, and then I took Kane's money line on Saturday night versus the Devils. Uh and then I was talking about my little Kane's call out here. Uh, they just came out of all-star break this week. They're second place behind the Rangers, actually, in the Metropolitan Division. Uh, they've got a 28 and now 16 record. Um, so, you know, they, they went into all-star break hot. Three big wins versus the Bruins, Devils, and Coyotes. And then now, obviously, I just said they lost to the Canucks by one on Tuesday night. So we'll see how they bounce back. Uh, but definitely going to talk about the Canes a little more, make a little bit more of an effort to bring them up yep. in our podcast. And uh, that is my second bet. I'm going to sit back on the, the Canes bet. I don't really watch hockey, but I'll try to get into it a little bit more. Yeah. So but we need to go to a we, game. We can go to a game, yeah. Do you really think Debo's going to get that many checkdowns thrown to him? See, okay. We're going to put this All right, I'm getting my bet. <laughs> we'll talk about this after the show. Um, so my bets of the week is, obviously, we, we all watched Carolina Duke game. We all took Carolina. It was an e- kind of an easier um, win for us. Boston College at Duke. This Saturday, Boston College is 13 and 6. Duke, obviously, the loss to Carolina is going to try to prove themselves. Uh, obviously, they've had a few games since then, but I still think they got a bad taste in their mouth. It's at home. I'm going to take Duke spread. Um, Boston College is 0 and 2 versus ranked teams, so don't play ranked teams very well. Obviously, Duke's one of the better teams in the nation. Just didn't have a good game versus Carolina, although Carolina looked great. I actually have them in my next bet. But I got Duke spread Saturday versus Boston College. And look, last week I was the only one that had a loss. I went one and one. They all trashed me all week. Still five hundred. We would have been even, boys. So, uh, but seven and one is still good. To- overall, seven and one is still yeah. good. So I'm going two and zero oh this week. And my second bet is UNC basketball at Miami. Ma- Miami's fifteen and eight. And UNC just had another bad loss after the Duke game. I think that's just kind of how it is. You have a, a extremely high, and then you think you're the best team in the nation and have a bad loss. So I think they're going to have a little fire under them uh, going to Miami. Miami doesn't have a great environment really in any sports, which is kind of sad. It's kind of crazy to think about. Um, there's just too many things to do in Miami, and I just don't think that the basketball game on Saturday, they're going to have a great crowd. So I'm going to take Carolina spread in that one as well. You're get, we're taking Carolina in the gap games. Yeah. You lose Clemson. They win. They lose Georgia Tech. They win. I like yeah. the pick. Yeah. So that's uh, that's it for our bets. We will post them on X at Whole Ayler Show. Hey, if you see this shirt right here, hey, get on uh, Drew. Show Jack right here, and I'll keep talking. Jack, move your mic. If you see Jack's shirt right here, it says it's local politics, but it has our logo on the on the back. Pirate Radio's logo on the left um, sleeve. We'll be giving these away on X. Tweet at us. Interact with us. Um, obviously, once this comes out, we've already done the call in show. But, yeah, check out those shirts. We'll post them. They're already posted everywhere. We have more merch coming, too. This is just kind of a marketing merch. We have some, like, actually really cool stuff on the way soon. So continue to follow us at Whole Ayler Show. Continue to support us. Interact with us. Like we said, this is the people show. We're going to listen to you guys. Whatever guest that you guys want to hear from, we're going to make it happen. 
continue Speaking to blow that, up the message boards. <laughs> we had the message boards fired up on uh, Hoist of Colors. Kate was talking about that all so week. So, yeah, we boards. had hey we that story though about the booster. I had a lot of people text. We I have a ton of stories like that. So uh, keep showing back up. Next week already we have Zay Jones interviewing, and then the next week we have Justin Hardy. He actually reached out to us to be on the show. So the show's getting more popular. We're excited about it. Um, continue to support us, Jack. What do you, do you got? Do you want to mention our special segment maybe or not yet? Special segment. Next week? Before? Not yet. We'll okay. wait. We'll right, wait. Right. Just because we want to make sure everything is there. We do have some cool things coming. Some bonus. Some, some bonus, bonus material. Yeah. And yeah. We'll, we'll mention part of it is I did speak to the writer, left fielder, and he will be on one of our episodes before the season. So we're already in on that. Uh, he we, He's already cool with it. I think I'm getting sick. I think I got jungle fever. <laughs> There we go. Are we hitting at a name? Um, so that might be a bonus episode on the way soon. So we're going to check it out. Um, continue to support us. Continue to interact with us. We appreciate you. We appreciate our sponsors. Hey, keep growing this thing. Let's keep stacking days. Obviously, the guests are going to continue to come. Reach out to us. Interact with us. We appreciate you guys. See you next time.